Welcome back. This is Breakfast at Dawn. Let me give you the headlines before anything else. India hands over another dossier to Islamabad ahead of the first anniversary of the Mumbai attacks. The NWFP government agrees to participate in the meeting of the National Finance Commission in Karachi today. Punjab is to demand its share of Heidel profits. To overcome the sugar crisis, the Economic Coordination Committee decides to release an additional 50,000 tons of sugar to utility stores. Those were our top three headlines at this hour. Now let's get into our next story. Prime Minister Gilani says that he enjoys all the powers of the chief executive. He claims that President Zadari has offered to surrender his powers under Article 58 to B, but the Prime Minister said that well, you know, he needed no powers to dissolve assemblies. Now it's nice to know that these matters are resolved so casually by our head of state and government. Meanwhile, rumors of a power tussle between the military and the executive continue. To make some sense of it all, we have with us now live in our Karachi studio, former Ambassador Zafar Hilali. Good morning and welcome to Breakfast at Dawn. Um, so, you know, wh wh what do you make of this uh, new statement from Prime Minister Gilani? Well, you know, in Pakistan, there's, you don't have the luxury of on-the-job training. I mean, you must come to, come to power equipped to deal with the situation. <coughs> Mr. Zadari came to power, he hadn't made up his mind on the judges issue, he hadn't made up his mind on the NRO, he hadn't made up his mind on the 17th Amendment. And then when the time came for him to make up his mind, he, was, he dithered. And as a result of that, I think you get the impression that the gentleman is finding it difficult really to lead. And therefore, you start, you know, you, the, the, all these stories start off about his incapability. I think there is a camp, kind of a campaign against him because they find him ineffective, he's unpopular, and he has proved that he takes the wrong decision at crucial moments. I mean, he took the wrong decision in the judge's case, he took the wrong decision on the NRO, and he's been in power, what, for over a year, two years nearly, and there is nothing concrete which has emerged on the 20th Amendment. So I think he has himself to blame for a lot of the stuff that is being said about him. I think basically it stems from people's unhappiness at his indifferent performance. And um, as I said, there's no time for onset job training in Pakistan. You've got to hit the ground running. Right. What about, I mean, the fact that he's never here, right? I mean, he's always either traveling or when he is here. I mean, you just don't see what a statesman should be doing. Mm. That's true. I think he should get out of his cage. He should get out of his bunker. He should move around. He should take the risk of something happening to him. I think in that sense, he should follow the lead of his wife, who took the risk, paid the price, but as a result of that, I think she went down as an icon, a legend. And this is the price that politics asks of you. And if you're not prepared to pay it, then as they say, if you can't stand the heat, don't get into the kitchen. <laughs> well said, as always. Um, what about the fact that there seems to be some dissent within the party as well, the Pakistan People's Party? And we've been talking about it, you know, from the, from the very <coughs> onset, that there has been some differing views there. You, you think that's continuing? Differing views you will always have within a party such as the PPP, which is essentially a very democratic party. People get the impression that when Benazir was in charge, and she ran it as much, uh, very much as a one-woman show, not at all. She took on uh, criticism. She invited criticism. She invited debate. Of course, once the decision was taken, she expected you to follow it loyally. I don't know. I, I have, uh, I know Mr. Zardari somewhat. I don't know how he functions in government. I haven't at all been in any meetings which he has chaired. I believe that he listens, but the problem is not enough to listen. The problem is to then act. And that is where I think he falls short, according to a lot of people. Well, a lot of people also think that he just listens to the wrong people. Yes, that's also true. Alas, I always felt that my first counsel to him would be, look, you've got friends who you like very much. Well, spend the evening with them. Don't spend the day as well, especially not when it comes to state decisions. And if you have weaknesses, like he does, for example, I mean, the man isn't, uh, uh, he wasn't trained for this job. I mean, he's, he's an accidental president then make up for your shortcomings by appointing people who are masters of that particular uh, field in which you lack experience. 
I don't think he's even done that. I mean, he hasn't compensated for his own lack of experience by appointing people who are experienced, who are well known. Even within the party, there are a lot of people within this party, by the way, who have not only a very close ear to the ground as far as public is concerned, but who have a lot of capabilities. Where are they? It's true. It's valid criticism. And uh, what about uh, Nawaz Sharif? Now he's saying that uh, you know Zardari is not his rival, that he's not interested in midterm polls, although that's what we've been hearing. There have been rumors of that as well from the very beginning. Well, you see, there are only three ways to get rid of Mr. Zardari. The first is to have him impeached, and for that you need two-thirds. That's not possible. The second is for him to lose a vote of confidence, and as long as Nawaz Sharif is with him, I don't think that will happen. The third is to, for the courts to find him guilty of some crime or the other, not while committed in office or even before office as much as the fact that, let's say, he was ineligible to, to become president. And then the fourth way is the way that Pakistanis normally follow, and that's the coup. I don't think that this country is ready for a coup at all. Um, on the other hand, the other things don't look practical. So I think rather than carping and caviling at the fact that they've got Zardari to lead this government, I think it would be better if they gave him some time. I can tell you that you get awfully distracted, because I worked for a prime minister who was awfully distracted by the fact that there were intrigues going around, all around her, and you keep having to look back, and you can't focus on government, you can't focus on policy. So. If you can't, if there are no other alternatives, you might as well lump it and get off his back so that let's see what he can do. What hopefully he can do better. I think he can't do worse. All right. Okay, let's take a quick break right here. We'll be right back. This is Breakfast at Dawn. <laughs>